Last year, I did my UCAT exam, and long story short, I ended up getting a very average score of 2640, which for reference, if you're doing the UCAT exam this year, that was equivalent to about 1900 to 1950. And I knew that wasn't the worst score I could get, but the fact that I got band three for situational judgment, it really made my hopes again to med school very low last year. But despite all of that, I still managed to get interviews from three out of the four places I applied to and a confirmed place at UCL. So in this video, I'm gonna break down everything I did to make my application still seem as convincing as it could so that if you didn't get the best UCAT this year either, you can copy and follow my steps to make sure you still get the offer this year. And the truth is, if you actually want to get into med school this year, then you have to forget about your dream uni or dream city that you want to study in. I knew the competition was already going to be too high, so there's no way I was going to get into Oxford or Cambridge or Imperial, and I accepted that. But what everyone else also tells you is that if your UCAT isn't the best, you have to apply strategically. But I was like, what's that even mean? Well. I searched and searched until I finally found a website called Journey to Healthcare. It's free and you do the usual, you put in your GCCN, A-level predicted grades, the UCAT, but it also asks you whether the postcode that you live in qualifies for a certain group called um, Polo Acorn Group, something like that. And basically it's where the number of people in your area that get post-16 education is lower than the UK average. So that means that certain unis that you apply to will give you more consideration. And that's exactly what I needed since, since my UCAT wasn't the best. Anyways, once you you finish the form and complete it, they'll send over an email to you with the unis that they think you have the best chance to get into. But remember, that's not the only unis you have to apply to. Because I remember out of all the unis they gave me, it was only King's College and Bristol's program that I checked out, which I later found out that I probably wasn't going to get into either. But because of that, I also found out about UCL that had a similar program with the postcode and that's why I applied to them. So that's why I highly recommend that you check out this website and actually use it. It's going to make your first step in getting into medical school so much easier since you're actually going to be applying to unis that you have a chance with. Okay, so let's say you've already decided which unis you're applying to. All you really got left now is to make the best personal statement you can. And remember, you have to put full effort into this because you need to make sure you stand out as much as possible from everyone else. This was my personal statement that got me three interviews. Obviously, don't copy it, but the structure that I basically used was I started with the intro for my first paragraph, then I moved on to work experience for the next one. For the paragraph after that, it was about a book that I read, then a volunteering one, then two paragraphs about extracurricular, one for cricket and one for this channel and then I ended it with an outro. That's it. And the only reason I used this structure was because I found this guy's video when I was making my personal statement and he said his personal statement got me to Oxford. So obviously I knew it had to be good and I just followed the structure. But the one thing that I got from actually reading his personal statement was that he wasn't waffling at all. It was just point after point after point. And that's when I realized that the personal statement is basically you just giving a picture about yourself to the university. So why are you trying to waste words, trying to make it sound super fancy when you can use those extra words to talk about as many extra and super curricular activities that you can and talking about super curricular activities it doesn't matter if you've got the best work experience in the best hospital department they don't care they genuinely don't care you can do anything and label as volunteering like, i'll give you an example if you tutored or helped anyone from your family or friend with school work for free that's volunteering or if you helped out in your school with exam days like 11 plus or other activities like on sports day it's also volunteering the universities don't care about what you've done it's more about what you learned from it so what i actually say is that from all your work experiences all your volunteering and any books that you've read take your basic notes put it into chat gpt and ask it to elaborate a bit more so you can take those best points as inspiration to put in your personal statement and even for my extracurricular activities i still try and make it as relevant as possible to medicine because i included skills like decision making persistence and teamwork that wasn't something i just needed for cricket on saturdays but it's also something that you need as a doctor as well and to be honest the only part of my personal statement that i try and make it sound super fancy was just my outro because i thought it would be good to end it in a nice way so that's really up to you you can do that for the intro or the outro depending on whether you want to make them interested from the very start or you just want to end it in an amazing way that's up to you now before i tell you how my interviews went you might have noticed that the chair i'm sitting on right now is different from the one i had before and you're absolutely right because this is the new wave c7 ergonomic chair that flexi spot sent over to me and so far it's been way better than the chair I had before. I mean for starters it's way more convenient because with my old chair I've probably seen that I had to buy an extra back support cushion because that chair honestly wasn't good to sit in for long hours at a time but with the C7 there's no need because it comes with its very own adaptive lumbar support that keeps your spine and back comfortable when you're sitting on it for long periods of time. It's got adjustable seat depth and seat height you can adjust the armrests and it's got vertical lumbar positioning. All this customization that comes with this chair means that it can be used by people from a range of heights from 170 
120 to 100 centimeters tall but what i also love about this chair it's got its own relaxation mode because of the footrest that it comes with you just pull it out and because of the backrest of this chair being able to incline to up to 115 degrees you can genuinely just enjoy some time chilling on your phone so if you know you're a student that's going to be spending a large part of your day studying gaming or just chilling in your room most of the time then i highly recommend you get this chair it's linked in the description it comes with a 60 day return and a five year warranty so you know it's a good quality so university of birmingham cardiff ucl and leicester were the universities that i applied to and i got interviews from all of them except uni of birmingham and i can't lie that was the only university that i knew i probably wasn't going to get an interview for and that was because i checked the ucat cut off the year before and it was higher than my score but the only reason i applied was because i thought it was going to be more convenient because it's closer than the other unis but anyway the interview this is the last step of your application where the people that are taking your interview they're not going to know where your UCAT is so you're starting at the same position as everyone else taking the interview so you know this is a step that you can't afford to mess up interviews are mmi it's like stations two minutes each where you go and they can ask you questions from medicine or your application you already know that but the three things that i did for my interviews that you need to do as well to make sure you get as many offers as you can to practice as many mocks as you can you need to know the ethics content and you need to go over your personal statement now obviously people say you gotta practice as many mocks as you can i knew i had to practice lots of mock mmis but i don't want to really pay as well i was lucky in my school they gave us a day where we practice interviews with other med students so after that all i did was i practice questions with chat gpt and i know it sounds weird but if you download the chat gpt app it's actually got a voice feature so you can actually have a conversation with it so all you gotta do is upload the questions you wanted to ask you you give your answer and then you can also tell it to give you feedback as if it was an mmi exam i can't lie at the start i don't think it was proper accurate because it kept on saying every answer i was given was good but once i told it to be as strict as it could be that's when it started giving me good feedback so i could improve my answers and i think just before my leicester interview that's when i paid like 10 15 pounds for mock mmi i'll try to leave that in the description if i find it and that was it for my practice after that if you didn't know for your interview you have to know about ethics like euthanasia consent and all that stuff i learned that from the uk cat website just try to read over as much as i could but i can't lie for my interviews i think it was only cardiff where they had one station that mentioned anything about consent or waiting times it was a bit of a waste of time for me but i'll still say you need to know it because you never know if they end up asking you the question and you can use that information to answer other related interview questions and then finally i just made sure i knew my personal statement as much as i could at the start i put my personal statement to chat gpt and asked it to give me questions but then towards the end just before my interviews i focused more on making sure i knew all the different points of what i learned from each of my work experiences and volunteering and sports because i remember from my ucl interview two stations i talked about cricket for different skills so you never know in your interview you might only have one work experience that you can actually talk about so make sure you have as many different points of what you learned about and the different skills you got from it because that's really going to help you and yeah that was it for my interviews part of uni put me on their waiting list because I was close to their university cutoff score. Leicester did something weird. They just gave a form that you had to fill out to get an offer, I think. I didn't fill it out because I already had the offer from UCL with easier grades. Yeah, you just have your A-levels to do after that. No personal statement or no MMI, so it's kind of easy to focus. But yeah, the only reason I made this video was that I just wanted to show you that UCAT isn't the main factor of getting into medicine. It's a step, just like all the other steps that I talked about in this video. If you haven't got the best UCAT, it don't matter. Just make sure all the other steps you do are strong as possible. If you like this video, and you find it useful click the subscribe button because i'm trying to get 20k before the year ends catch you in the next one peace